Okay, so today I actually learned, um, especially in the printer and 3D filament world, you get what you pay for. This is uh, MakerBot ABS, cost $48 for the uh, one kilogram roll from Micro Center. Previously, I was trying to print this and actually did print. Uh, the one that's on my, my prototype here with black generic inland brand ABS. You can really see how crap it really came out. And it even failed printing right up at the, the top here. It should be about four millimeters higher as you can see with the fan here. So go all the way to the top of the fan. So, it, this one happened to fail because I didn't print supports and I'm using a magnetic attachment system and when it started to print the upper ring of the fan enclosure here, it started to bend up and the print head got caught and popped the magnets. So, this, I mean, there's two reasons it failed. One is a really crappy filament. And that was after I printed, oh, I actually got some splits there, too. I had uh, printed a calibration tower with it, basically, and got the optimal print temperature. Now, here's the part of the tower that I printed with, uh, you know, with Cura in order to calibrate and get the proper print temperature. Now, uh, you'll see... 249 down to 241 and I think I determined 244 was about the best on here but look at this see how flimsy and thin it is that's a single wall spiral vase setting and that's what it came up with now with the MakerBot filament here right off the bat I noticed it was way different Here's the same STL printed would make about, I was messing around with the speed really high down here, but then I slowed it back down 100%. So, this tower starts at 260 degrees here, and goes all the way down to 241, I think. Oh, I didn't mark it, but it's one degree per iteration here. But look how consistent this is, number one. I mean, 260 down to 240, it gets slightly different up here, but nothing major, right, that looks pretty stunning, the other thing is, look how thick it is, this is, it crushes, but barely, this is like, this is like a coke bottle, it's so easy to push, not quite as easy as a coke bottle, but look at that, flexes like crazy. Even if I put them side by side, you can see the tremendous difference in width. So, actually, if I put my finger, hold on, sorry about this. I put my finger up there at the top. Look at that, big difference. Now, that blew me away right there. You know, I think I even had to turn the extrusion rate down quite a bit for this and they're both 1.75 millimeter this is on average probably about 1.73 or so a little bit smaller but the MakerBot is consistently 1.75 or a little bit over um, but this is a million times better quality as I drop it on the floor than the other one so I'm trying to print my fan shroud with this now, and I actually turn support on, so that's what all the extra racket is, and I don't have Simply Simplify 3D yet, but when I will, I can eliminate the, the support and the screw holes in here that we don't really need. Um, I really just wanted to support the top end of the fan, oops, if I zoom out, the top end of the fan shroud up here, you know. So the ones in the center of the, the fan ducts are the ones that I wanted, but 
Eh, I'm printing it relatively slow, only about 60 millimeters per second and the fastest at the moment. And I have the infill quite slow because um, I had to do that with the Inland brand uh, ABS in order to even get a halfway decent starting to look print and then it would fail further along. This is being really consistent here. So, like I said, I'm putting real slow right now, so the jaggedness in the model here, oh wow, look at that, I guess that overlapped a little bit too much, it's impacting into the, you know, it's just my design thrown together, and there goes my light, and uh, Tinkercad, so I could actually learn some real CAD software, it's a very complex part, um, I tend to over-engineer things. I'm probably going to have to change this, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's my little burb. And uh, so another thing I'll show you real quick is this is my um, magnetic effector with the 12 millimeter dish magnets on the effector. I can actually show them to you on my prototype triple head here. The 12 millimeters round with a dish and a hole, kind of some hole for a 4 millimeter screw. Um, they hold really well. I mean, they hold all of this weight. And if I zoom back out, they hold all of this weight quite well without any extra supports. I was printing up to about 60 millimeters per second, and this thing was kind of whipping around and staying, staying put, didn't pop off until. It hit a, a lift, you know, and I, I can understand that. So, but I still, I have redesigned my carriages up here. Don't mind the the loops with the spring and the rubber band. That's because the three eighths uh, magnets here that I used on my old effector, which is right here. Um, they don't quite have enough surface area to contact the, the ball joints on the effector end to hold it well. They seem to work fine up here on the carriages and the only reason I'm presuming that is because there's less force exerted from up on the carriage whereas down here they're, they're moving that poor um, end effector all around. So, but I have printed these out. I have them right here in a Ziploc baggie with uh, the 12 millimeter magnet slots ready to go into use but I ran out of 12 millimeter magnets when I put them on my my prototype three-way E3D head so I've got some more on order that are probably gonna take a week or more to come in and I thought I was gonna stop before then but that's it there's my very highly modified folder Polgatech tech console cooling fans on the steppers. They just get a little bit warm because they're really crappy small motors that they include with them. I've actually got some 0.9 millimeter high torque one, I mean 0.9 degree high torque ones coming in the mail. I uh, just ordered from SparkFun to replace those so I'll be able to, uh, I should probably not dial the current down but they have much higher current handling capacity a lot more torque so they won't get as hot. I probably won't need any cooling at all with them. Um, I got these corner braces that I engineered. I'll put it up on Thingiverse. I don't have it up there now. They're nice and strong. Is, I think I printed these in PLA. Oh, I just made it crack. I guess they're not quite as strong as I thought. But have them on the corners. Don't have them on all the corners because I did, you know, hide the wires before. So there's wires going through here. And uh, I'll have to move those out to the outer edge or something so that I can put my corner braces on. Or redesign them to go around the outside of the corners, kind of like the corners do. But they seem to help with the rigidity a lot. And uh, I have some ones that were a failed print where it got caught. I tried to print six at once and it got caught when uh, it was closing the hole. And all six failed. But they figured they were a little less than halfway printed. They provide some rigidity and they do help. So, sorry about the long-winded video that I thought was going to be a little bit short. But, uh... I guess I covered a lot in the time frame. Questions, comments, etc.
drop me a uh, a message. Thank you much. Bye.